YouTube, it's Fry Phillips. Look what we've got here. It's a brand new plane from E-Flight, the way we like it. This is the Decathlon RJ Gritter livery. So if you don't know who he is, he does amazing 3D performances and he's a very young pilot. Got to start in RC just like you might. So check it out right now. If you've also, another thing he's done that I've seen personally a number of times is they do this cool bit where they steal the cub and it's really fun to watch. So anyway, guys, check it out right here, right now. We got links in the video description below. There are no flaps on this plane, so that's my only concern. There are LEDs. All right, here we go. 4S 2200. Now this plane is probably going to tend to fly a little bit 3D-ish. Need to come back here, camera crew. Mm -hmm. Okay, so far so good. Haven't had any crazy tendencies that I have to try to trim out. Feel like the elevator might need a little bit of trim for me. The AS3X is working just fine. We set ours up with the AS3X safe. And then also, let's see if we can do a prop hang for you with the clouds in the background. Oh yeah, no problem at all. It's got a short body, the decathlon. So the wingspan is really long compared to the body of the aircraft. And you can see that braking there, that's a function of the avian, which we have set up with thrust reverse. So we're just gonna try to do a little bit lower and closer to the ground. I gotta get a little bit of trim on the elevator here. There we go, now we're going more level. Feel like I got just a little bit too much. There we go. So guys, love these aerobatic general aviation planes. It's one of my sweet spots. And so I've never had the decathlon, so I'm super excited. Just went to try to throw on the flaps that don't exist. And so I quickly figured out they didn't exist when nothing happened. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you guys want to set up flap runs, shouldn't be a big deal. Just remember they used two of the channel ports to power LEDs, so you have to get a Y cable, no big deal. Should be a pretty easy thing to do. Good roll rate, as you can see. Upside down flight performance is very good. It's easy to control. It doesn't lose a lot of altitude. And then you've got plenty of power to get out of whatever it is you're doing. Trying to stay with the clouds in the backdrop so the camera doesn't come out of focus, folks. I would have loved to see an inboard flap, but I know on a real life, they don't have an inboard flap on this plane that I know of. Good soft tires help with not perfect landings like that one. The more of a touch and go, if you will. we we'll do some snap rolls here in a second. Let's get it up to altitude and snap it. Also known as corn holes, if you're a Brian Phillips RC fan. And the crazy thing is you've got so much power, you can kind of come out of a snap roll and then you can just hover right out of it. Let's watch this. Oh yeah, I didn't quite get into the throttle hard enough. And I gotta say, beautiful prop, well finished. And if you guys are into general aviation and scale aerobatic performances, like what you've seen, Growing up in air shows, then you got to get your hands on one of these. RJ would really appreciate it. And obviously Horizon would. But we love working with these guys when they're making these cool airplanes. We're doing inside, if you can. Mm -hmm. there. Now, you can't fly this on 3S. You're probably going to get a lot more scale performance. We're probably like super scale power levels right now. But it's all part of the show and that's why I like it. Having the options open the door to new possibilities. We do have telemetry on this receiver so we should get a nice warning about our voltage if we get a little bit too close to the limit. There's our timer. Oh wait, I heard something. Yeah, I think it was timer. Yeah, but I didn't hear it keep counting. I'm not sure what's going on. So now guys, if you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC and you're like, what is this guy doing 
slamming the sticks in this front yard area. Well, first of all, this is our 24 acre property in Class G airspace. We love flying for you here. We built our little runway, also known as a driveway, but more of a runway than anything because it's very straight. We're gonna be extending it soon and we've got a pond going in in the backyard. Then we're gonna build a dam runway back there. It's gonna go across the dam and that's gonna give us another crosswind strip. And then eventually we'll have a full scale strip. A little slip. There's our timer. Boy, that thing is a rocket ship, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. But you know, it's not a rocket ship in the RV8 method because I feel like this one feels like it's supposed to be a crazy 3D performance plane. Now, for that reason, I am gonna warn you, you probably have to have a little bit of skill to fly this. They said it's a skill level two, but I'm feeling like it's a little bit loose on the sticks compared to what we're used to. Okay, so now we're in auto leveling. So if you're brand new to the hobby and you just wanna have something that's gonna automatically level when you let go, you can run safe. As you can see here, I let go of the sticks and look what happens. By the way, that's not what happens in a normal application that would normally crash when you let go of the sticks. <laughs> okay, so let's do a safe pass for you. It's gonna limit your bank angles and it's also gonna level the plane and it's gonna help you simultaneously resist the impacts of wind, but it doesn't resist the impacts of the ground. <laughs> Okay, out of safe. I'm in off right now, so now it should be like insane. Okay, yeah, pretty insane, guys. Now I went back to AS3X because I didn't like the way it janked out of that last maneuver. But it just flies really light on its feet. It's got a beautiful trim livery. Looks just like the real one. We just got on the website to check out RJ's stuff. And uh, he's got some pretty cool stuff going there. Should we link to his website? Yeah. Yeah, we can throw a link sure. in there. Remember, we're not really affiliated with RJ in any way, but I do want him to come fly his plane on our backyard. Yeah. That would be so cool. That would be cool. And I gotta say, anybody who is a proponent of RC, the Tyler Perrys of the world, that just have made it, and still love RC, we're always all about those people because RC is a small community of people that love this stuff. And if you get right down to it, all these companies that make these planes are a pretty small community too. And I say it all the time, there's a million easier ways to make a buck than making RC planes. And so I wanna make sure every chance we get, we can support these different RC manufacturers, obviously work with them to accomplish our goals, which is to help prevent one and dones, get people invested in the hobby, bring people back to the hobby, and of course, occasionally hold their feet to the fire when they do stupid things. And fortunately, we've had pretty good luck for a while. There's been a couple of, uh, let's call them hiccups lately, but the truth is we love what we do and we love doing it. As long as you guys keep coming back to watch the videos, we'll keep doing it. Hard on the throttle. And if you're brand new to the channel and you wanna help support us, all you gotta do is look for the planes. Whoa, that was a bad pull out. Look for the planes, transmitters, and batteries that you're already gonna get. When you buy them, we'll get support from the manufacturers. Oh, there is a lion about to attack. Do you see the lion? I was like, what is that? What is that dark thing? Is that the shadow? Okay, we're gonna slip, 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 slip. and we're gonna stop it. <laughs> now, I did talk about thrust reverse. Thrust reverse is very nice, especially for back taxing, but more for slowing the plane down. I gotta say, this thing is greasy. It just wants to keep going, and we are gonna take back off because that was a terrifically bad landing. Okay, so get it up on its mains. And definitely the landing gear are very soft, okay? So if you guys are brand new to the hobby, oh, I gotta lay in the other way. 
Why did I land that way? That was kind of dumb. I don't know. I was kind of surprised you were going that way. I landed with the wind. So let's see if we can do this. I'm kind of getting low on juice. Okay, so we're gonna find this opening. See the bounce? Man, this plane could definitely use some flaps to make it easier to land. But I gotta say, you know, you get a scale aerobatic plane like this, you're gonna have to work at it a little bit. Okay, camera crew, you good? <laughs> slip, 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 slip. Find the low point, get it into a little bit more of a stall, and there it is, now we got it. And that thrust reverse is gonna help you put it down right where you want, even though the thing wants to keep flying forever, and you're gonna wanna keep flying together forever. So that's why we have another 2200 4S. Are we gonna fly this thing? She says. I think we need to wait for sunset. I think we'll wait for sunset. But guys, if we don't get the sunset flight, if mother nature throws us a curveball, I gotta say, this plane is super fun. It's really a different flying experience. It is not an easy to fly plane, okay? And I know some of you are thinking, but you're supposed to say it's easy because they said skill level two. I gotta beg to differ on this one. I feel like it's definitely loose on the sticks. If you're not prepared for, if you're not prepared for, and my expo is up here, why am I up there? If you're not prepared for looseness, you may not be prepared for this. And I just gotta say, safe helps a lot. Um, but remember, at the end of the day, when you have an aerobatic plane that's designed to be aerobatic, it's gonna tend to do aerobatics really well. And then there's, there's some trade-offs are that the landings are gonna be a little bit faster. And obviously we don't have flaps to deploy to help slow us down and reduce that stall speed. But generally speaking, the wing loading is good. It gets out there, it's pretty symmetrical. I did have to have some clicks of trim. I was surprised by that. We don't often have that. And uh, pretty good flight time. We're about, about 10 minutes of flight mm -hmm. time. We had a five minute flight timer. And then we were at six minutes and nine when I just hit clear there. So minus the blathering, about 10 minutes, okay? Yep. Now also, is it gonna handle grass ops? Ay -ya. I don't know. You're gonna have to have some pretty- Nice grass. Nice grass yeah. if you're gonna do that. Because I'm gonna tell you this, like our grass probably wouldn't do it here just because it is, they're not huge wheels. Now the soft wheels help a lot with those touchdowns, but we still got bounce because the speed is up, okay? So when I come in here and I slip, 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 and then I realize I'm going with the wind, it sort of undermines my ability to slow it down properly. But when I came over here, we do have a crosswind that's cutting at about like darn near 45, 50 degrees of our runway right now. So just keep that in mind. I gotta keep my speed up to keep the plane flying but you might not have that issue, or if you have wind that's going straight down the runway, it's gonna help a lot to slow this bird down. Now, let's talk about looks. Looks are amazing. Let's talk about easy accessibility for transport. You can take the wing off in a matter of two bolts, thumb bolts, and that is also a two millimeter drive. So you can use a screwdriver if you want. And then you've got clips for the wing struts, and the wing comes off altogether. But to be honest, this is not that big of a plane. At 1.2 meters, you should be able to get this into most cars and trucks. Now, if you're putting it in the back of your decathlon, <laughs> then you might have a harder time. And I wonder if that's maybe why they did that. Because look, you got one, two, three, and four. These just snap off. You don't have to undo any tools. And then these things pull in and they slide out, but just don't get a deep penetration in the wrong hole. We'll talk more about that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. So RJ can put his decathlon in the back of his decathlon when he comes to land here? He can yeah, bring it with him? Sure. Definitely. But that being said, RJ, if you're watching, <laughs> thanks for putting together this plane with Horizon. We love working with guys that are doing really cool things. You can see the LED here. Goodness. What the heck is going on back there? There's like bombs going off and freaking missiles. And okay, so we have strobes, we have green, we have strobe, we have red, and then we have a tail light, a true tail light, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I love those features, makes the plane more useful when you're flying in those low light afternoon flights in the middle of winter when it gets dark at 4.30. So seriously, really nice. Unfortunately, in terms of showing off the lights right now, the sun is really competing for that interest. And so what's gonna happen is if we hit the sunset flight, we can show you just how beautiful this thing looks in the sky. And hopefully we'll get a gorgeous sunset if they don't blow us up over there. <laughs> I don't know what our neighbors are doing, but it, it definitely sounds like they're blowing things up. So. We do like our neighbors a lot. So anyway, guys, that's all you get for right now. Hopefully we're gonna have one more flight coming, but if you don't get to see that today, we will do second thoughts just like always and leave your comments and questions down below. Thanks to our Patreons for being monthly supporters, YouTube members, 
YouTube super thanks, and then Patreon or PayPal supporters. We appreciate you guys doing those gifts of support. But at the end of the day, really the best way to support us is if you could buy Amazing Planes, you're gonna love Amazing Planes and you're gonna support us in that way too. Don't forget to smash the like button and click the bell for notifications so that you get notified of all the new content that's coming from Brian Phillips RC. The algorithms have changed on YouTube in the last six months to a year and it has made an impact on everybody's channel, not the least of which is ours, of course. So if you wanna see what's new and what's exciting, click the bell when you're subscribing. And if you subscribed and didn't click the bell, then I think you can like unsubscribe and resubscribe and then you'll have the bell cup pop up or something like that. You should be able to go in and adjust. Yeah, see. you can adjust your settings. I have no idea how to do it. So anyway, guys, that's all you get for today. We love doing this stuff. Hopefully there'll be a sunset flight right now. If you wanna see the Unbox Build radio setup, we do have that right now. And uh, in terms of build, we did have a little bit of trouble just kind of getting the tail together, um, mostly because I was just frustrated with it. but. Overall, the build is actually easy. pretty easy. Yeah. Just a few screws. There's like six screws that hold the bottom on, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit unusual. Normally it's like two or three or four, but there's six. Mm -hmm. But it does a really good job of keeping the hardware small and concise. And then don't forget this screw down here, of course. And don't forget you have to plug in this wire. We did tape over these wires. So if you wanna see the entire layout of that process, we have the Unbox Build Radio Setup published right now so you can see it. And if this plane isn't your cup of tea, we have tons, literally thousands of other videos to wet your whistle that you can check out right now, either by sorting through the playlist or by going to brianphillipsrc.com and it will be sorted by type or by the affiliate, manufacturer, hobby shop, brand, whatever we worked with, you'll be able to find it that way too. So either way, whatever's easier. Uh, by the way, something like this would be a general aviation um, or like 3D. Yep, there's another bomb going off. I don't know what our neighbors are doing, but it sounds really exciting. So maybe we should go find out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Brian Phillips, RC, signing out. So much more right around the corner. Thanks for watching. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this. It's brand new from E-Flight. This is the Decathlon 1.2 meter. And this one has the livery from RJ Gritter, which is a full-scale pilot. And this is modeled directly after his plane that just got a new paint job pretty sweet stuff rj has made a career of flying and we got a full-scale brother and sister right up in the air so we're gonna make sure we don't fly like you know 10,000 feet all right here we go guys without further ado we'll show you one feature oh yeah it's take off take off flaps no it's thrust reverse we haven't had a decathlon before so super excited for this here we go Woo! gets a little wonk on the mains, but then once you're up in the air, you're gonna have a super experience. And it's gonna be very aerobatic experience because that's what the big bird does too. And I gotta say, RJ, if you ever wanna come fly the back of our property, we're putting in a full scale airstrip and that would be something else. We have seen you at air shows for years now I gotta warn you guys, if you're brand new in RC aviation, this plane's listed as a two, a skill level two, but I would say I find it to be a little bit touchy. It's good flying, but dang, it does what it does and it does it like right now. And it's definitely an aerobatic tendency. It feels different than some 3D planes we've had, but you can do 3D maneuvers if you want. And you can definitely do aerobatics. What I wanna do is I wanna kinda of slow it down and show you a prop paying real quick. So we'll try to get somewhere where the lighting's cool. On 4S, plenty of power. And I'm not really working it hard either, guys. Look at this. Just small corrections. Didn't give you a very good demo of that, but that's okay. And then you can see that the prop stops. That is part of braking as a result of using the avian esc see how quick i kick that tail around just small movements for the elevator are going to get that tail to do what you want when you want and i can tell you one thing if you want this thing flying fast you want to fly it on 4s it will fly on 3s and it will do just fine but i think the vast majority of us are going to be putting it up to its limits 
right in the wash from the sun. So beautiful. We'll actually do a knife edge for you there. Kind of a sloppy one. I'm not real good at knife edges, you may have noticed, folks. I tend to stray a lot when I do knife edges. Something I'm trying to improve on. Do you remember earlier when we were filming and I had a spider that came off of my hat? I do remember that. Okay, was that this plane? I think it was at the Inside. end of this one. There is a spider that I just saw in the air right about the same spot we were sitting. <laughs> I do not understand how that can be. So if you guys are brand new to RC aviation and you want something that's gonna challenge your skills, I think this plane might do the trick. Very capable model. The decathlon is very aerobatic. I like flying it. It's definitely a little bit more alive than some planes you've seen. And with AS3X and safe, if you ever get into trouble, check this out. Uh-oh, safe. There's safe, guys. So I'm gonna just show you safe. Using the rudder, let go, rolling it, rolling it, rolling it, pushing it down, letting go. It's gonna limit your bank angles. And then as soon as you let go, it just keeps flying. Definitely want to keep your eyes on your plane under most circumstances, but let's just show you that. Look, got even looking, okay? Now, is that a good idea? Is it gonna keep doing that forever? I don't know, it depends on if a wall gets in the way, but I'm gonna come out of safe now. I actually set mine up with an off setting as well. We'll show you how to do that in the Unbox Build Radio setup and look, LEDs look super realistic, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the LEDs look great in the sunset. I love when you can get it into these good prop hangs, plenty of elevator and rudder authority. To just keep that thing right where you want and then flip right out of it. I love doing that. A little snap roll it there. Also known as cornhole. And then we'll power it out of the cornhole. Bring it down. You see those geese in the distance? I think mm -hmm. they're coming up close. I wonder if it'll flat spin for us. Yes, it will, to a certain extent. I just didn't execute very good. So guys, if you're brand new to RC, model RC aviation, and you want something that's gonna challenge you, this plane would be good. It is definitely, we've got our countdown, so I'm gonna stop talking. It is definitely gonna keep you on your toes, especially if you fly it fast. I'd suggest flying it in calm because it does get dos it does get d tossed around a little bit by the wind, being it's not a huge model. 1.2 meters makes it easy to transport. It's a pretty easy build, kind of a goofy cable you got to plug in for the tail light, but definitely worth it because I love tail lights. Tail lights are especially helpful when you're trying to bring it into land. Ho oh, ho! Touch and go! Grass ops, guys. <laughs> Leave it in the comments if I meant to do it or not. Let me know what you guys think. There we go. Just bring it down, let it get flying, and then into the power again. So as you can see, this thing just does what it does and it does it pretty good. And it's pretty doing it all the way, America style. If you guys wanna get one for your very own, check it out in the links of the video description below, up and over. Now, one thing I wish this plane had that it doesn't because it's modeled after a real plane would be a landing flap inboard. But this thing just has ailerons and I'm gonna slip, 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 a little bit of spin on the props and then thrust reverse really pushes that prop. That's why you heard that. You'll hear that. So thrust reverse does the job. I also wanna talk about telemetry. If you didn't get to see There's thrust reverse, excuse me, not thrust reverse, but telemetry. And I like this screen, especially when I'm getting close to running out of juice, but I already have an alarm set. And so that's gonna tell me verbally when I need to land. But I'm gonna go ahead and back taxi again. In terms of stole performance, I'm kind of curious how it'll do in the grass. I mean, obviously we did a grass touch and go. Uh, again, we're gonna let you guys decide whether or not that was on purpose. <laughs> okay, getting up to speed. Oh, that's way better than I thought it was gonna yeah. do. 
Man, that looks so good. The silhouette is perfect. Man, we're getting those beautiful pink clouds tonight, aren't we? Mm-hmm. My, light, my lighting's getting a little wonky. We recently did a pylon racer, folks, and I gotta say, this thing feels a lot like the pylon racer that we did, only a lot more, it's just soft in the sticks, like, or not soft, what am I trying to say? It's a lot more touchy. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a thing you wanna be aware of. Get that thing flying. When you get a plane tossed up in the air like that, don't freak out. You did it. You had a reason for doing it. All you gotta do is just follow the basic operating procedure, the standing operating procedure, standard operating procedures you were following before. Get the plane flying. And then control like any other time. The difference is you need to set yourself in a place, set yourself up in a place where you've got enough time to deal with it. I was right around the top of that hill just to get it where it needs to be. We're gonna bring it over the crest of these trees. We're gonna see if we can do a long drawn out landing. We're probably a little too hot. Oh yeah, way too hot. Look at this. Whew. And we'll do a nice little stall turn here for you. It was almost in power till the end there. Very, very beautiful. Let's see if we can slip it in here. Now with thrust reverse, you can get away with that. But as you can see, I had a wing strike. Now you don't wanna have wing strikes, but I can tell you this, I just don't have the glide slope at this property as we sit to do a nice drawn out flight. But as you can see, we, we definitely get a little bit wonky on the mains. And I think that has to do with just being a little bit A little soft. What I'm trying to say is that, uh, watch out for that cherry. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh, Three-wheel nice. landing actually worked pretty good. Uh, what I was trying to say, but I was preoccupied by flying, is that the landing gear, and I do show this in the unbox, they're pretty soft. Like they they move a lot. They're very they're very springy, and so what that translates onto the ground is it. I think that it it allows the toe in toe out on the wheels. And so you're gonna find that now. It looks really good. Everything looks really scale on this plane, which I love, but that's a trade off. So instead of having a big honking aluminum bracket, that's gonna basically never bend. I noticed that when you get this thing up onto the mains, it's just very soft, okay? Oh, and look, I've got a screw coming loose on my pants. Oh no. You're supposed to warn your buddies if they're screws coming loose on their pants. So I'll have to tighten that. But beyond that, I really enjoy this plane. I think it's fun. It's a different experience. It's not what I expected. I thought this thing was gonna fly like a J3 Cub and it doesn't, okay? It flies very different. It's very engaging. It's very touchy, okay? Now for that reason, you may want to run a little higher expo if you're a newer pilot. And if you're a brand new pilot, even though they say skill level two, I'm kind of leaning toward this is a little harder than most skill level twos, although two is sort of a broad category. Um, that being said, is it a bad plane for that? No, it's just that you wanna be a little bit careful. If you're a brand new beginner pilot, this might be a little bit tough for you. So just keep that in mind. Also, I gotta say, all the decals and everything look really cool. These are wet decals, okay? And we have a manned aircraft somewhere, right over there. He's right way right over the hill. Over the rise. Yeah, he's way over there. So I think I just saw an RV-8 doing a loop earlier, right before we got ready to film. <laughs> it was out. so crazy because he was out here and that's what happens sometimes. These guys come out into this Class G airspace and they, they do um, maneuvering. That's what they say to <laughs> ATC. We're doing maneuvering. Um, but I swear he was coming out of a loop and I came out and I just heard, he was roaring out of a dive. So I was like, he must done a loop. And then he made a super sharp bank and it was really neat. And it made me think, that would be so cool if RJ came out here and landed right there. Let's show him right there. Yeah. Not on the damn runway or on this runway. This runway would be probably a little bit short for his plane. 
Uh, but that runway is gonna go out over where the dam is. You can point with your with your fingers if you want. Those those Almost. stakes are where the dam is gonna be. Yep. But then that takes you out to the end of the hill there. Here. And that hill is gonna end up, it wraps all the way around our property and it's gonna be like a 1200 foot long runway. So still a fairly short runway. Uh, but for a plane like this, I would imagine a decathlon could do that all day long. I know a J3 Cub could, and that'd be pretty cool because I've seen his J3 Cub too, or if he's involved in that demo, I know they've got it on their website. Uh, it's the one where they pretend that there's a, like a drunken crowd member jumps into the plane and flies away. It's super fun. I'm sure you guys have seen it. If you're into aviation at all, you've probably seen it. Uh, but it's really neat if you haven't seen it in person. It's a little bit invigorating the first time you notice it because you're like, is that real? <laughs> well, the only reason I knew is because I'd seen it online so many times. But still, it's really fun to see. And by the way, I got to say, anytime we've got a proponent of RC in full scale, we want to take advantage. That's super cool. And a lot of people that fly full scale end up starting in RC. And that's what happened with them too. And so that's really exciting. And uh, we want to spread the joy of RC. And that's what we do here on Brian Phillips. RC almost every day and we're releasing footage two to six times a week and lately it's felt more like the six and less like the two so yeah. if you guys are brand new on the channel make sure you click the bell when you're subscribing and definitely smash the like button it'll help us to get videos in front of you even if you're subscribed does not necessarily mean you're getting notified okay because if you're notified then you can watch the videos or you can reject the videos either way at least you'll know and then also if you want to help support us uh, beyond the smashing like button and clicking the bell and subscribing all those good normal things and you want to support us financially we have four ways the best of which i'll leave for the last we have patreon monthly we have youtube membership which is monthly youtube super thanks which is one time and then paypal one times but none of those are things we ask for people just do them and they beat us over the head for years and so we finally said yes so we really appreciate you guys that are su supporting us in those ways what we really want you to do is buy amazing aircraft, transmitters, batteries, leaf blowers, whatever it is we're reviewing. We'll have links in the video description below because then what happens is we put that burden onto the companies that utilize this channel and your patronage to make their business model work. And so at the end of the day, we want that little ecosystem to work because over time we have grown our channel with your help and we're not like a super fast or super big growing channel. And that's fine. We're okay with it because we got the real audience, the real RC enthusiasts right here on Brian Phillips RC. If you guys are watching, we know you guys are really out there flying RC planes, okay? And we know you really love it just like I do and just like Megan tolerates. So anyway, if you guys wanna help support us, you know how to do it. And uh, those are the ways. But guys, NX-10 worked fine on this. You could have probably used the 70, it would have been fine. Um, and that being said, I gotta say, really pretty plane. It's, uh, you know, the stars and bars, you know, go America finish is pretty awesome. And I gotta say, one other thing too, is these are really thin. I like the way that they look. And I just, I just love the fact that they kept all the scale lines so tight on this plane, okay? I also really appreciate having lights, okay? Now, the other thing too is I had complained that this thing needs some flaps, and I stand by that. Even though this model in real life, it's modeled after a real life plane, I would really like to see a full length aileron that acts as a flapper on or an inboard flap. The cool thing is it would be easy to add either function or to just do outboard flaps. There is a joiner that connects to one wire that splits out right here as part of the wing. In our unbox build radio setup, we point out where you can separate and you have plenty of channels on that radio. You'll have to redo the setup a little bit just because they have plugged in this light and this light to a pluggable servo, cha servo channel. And then they used the gear channel to operate safe select as set up in the bind and fly profile out of the box. But you can do advanced menus and you can change that just so you know. So if you go down to forward programming, all you have to do is go to active and then you go to other settings and you can go to factory reset, boom. Ready to rock and roll, rewire, rewire it the way you want and then treat it exactly like you would treat any other plug and fly plane that we do all the time here on Brian Phillips RC. And you can just watch a video that has a similar configuration, uh, maybe with outboard flaps or outboard flapperons or spoilerons, which I think we just did. We just did that on the Kachendo Evo uh, 1.5 the other day. 
because we had to do a factory reset. But we had to bring out the computer and hook it up and do all this firmware updates and crap. You don't have to do that now. You just do it all from the forward programming. And of course, inside you have to change around some wires. So remember, for the wires that go to the tail and the wires that go to the nose, all you have to do is unplug those, put them into a Y cable, and then shear uh, steel power on any of the channels. It doesn't matter which one, okay? You can even use the bind plug that they brought to the front of the plane for some reason. You don't need the bind plug. You can reach in with your hand. I mean, my hand is big and I had a little hard time getting back there to press the button, but you can do it. So you can unplug that and take power there too. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. And I just wanna say, the only reason I care about that stuff is because we have a very short runway and this plane is slippery, okay? So it'd probably help with that. Other than that, really fun plane. It's gonna do what you expect it to do and I think you're gonna enjoy it. So check it out in the video description below. You can find the links for the plane, the battery we used, which is 4S 2200, I believe 30C. We didn't go to 50Cs on this. Okay. this the 30Cs are fine. And if you went to a 50C, you'd be even more punchy on power. Uh, 3S would be fine on this plane all day long. Just make sure your center of gravity works out because I have my 4S just smack dab in the middle of the tray and it's perfect on the CG, which is like 55 to 65 millimeters back from the leading edge, if I remember right. So of course, we'll show all that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. There's also a structural member on this one, if I remember right. Yeah, it lined up right It lined on. up almost perfectly with that structural rib. Yeah, you can rib. see your marks here, right but there. there's a rib there. Yep. yep, so you can just balance it right on the rib. So that's super nice. And if you want it to be more agile and more crazy, just slide it back. Then there are release things down here, but I don't like the angle, so I added this tape. And we'll show that also. But you can see where I got my 4,000, 2,200, okay? So 4S, really easy to 4S, use. 4S, 2,200, sorry, good catch. Um, and then also, I love the fact that we got a light on the tail feathers, that is really nice. Visibility from in the air is so nice like this. You can watch it coming in, uh, but just remember opaque finish does not glow through the wings like a regular unpainted, unfinished wing. Most of this plane is covered, okay? The only place that's not painted is the bottom half of the fuse. That's it. Everything else is either covered with a decal or paint. And so you have a really nice, robust, bright colored plane. And I like that. I do need to tighten my screw though, don't let me forget. Okay. Oh, and by the way, squishy tires. But as you can see, it's still, I mean, you need every bit of that squish. You almost need to be squishier because this thing comes in so soft, you know, or so soft on the wheels. And um, you're going so fast. If you're landing on grass, grass tops will be fine. I probably should have just showed that. I feel like you got lucky with what you got on our grass, the way our grass Without is Without tipping right over? Now. Yeah. But. Well, and what you guys may not be aware is we did some resurfacing last season, and that's why there's like all these missed spots of grass. Yeah. And we're hoping, you know, it's like when you have a, a new property, it takes years to get these things straightened out. And then one UPS driver, FedEx driver, DHL driver, which we get like almost every day, to go off the edge and screw it all up or me, which I've only done like once in four years, but they do it like every five minutes, it seems like. So we're trying to get this so that the grass hops will be closer to your flight field so we can demonstrate a little bit more clearly what you guys are up against. Because I know a lot of you guys fly off of grass strips or geotextile strips. So, and maybe at some point we'll have a geotextile strip out there um, where the full scale strip will be. So not sure how that's gonna work, but don't want to make promises until we have kind of plans afoot. And we don't on that yet. So without further ado, we're going to wish you a good evening. And we hope you guys will come back for more here on Brian Phillips RC. Because there's so much content, we can barely squeeze it in. Just ask my wife. Mm -hmm. Come back for more. Thanks for watching.